We've all heard the phrase, I was born in the wrong generation. Even a quick YouTube search will show you most channels are making fun of the phrase, and for good reason too. Developing a quirky attachment to your 70s doesn't tell us much, but what exactly do we mean by that? What are we longing for? What do we miss? And what's the remedy? It's only natural to ask ourselves how we miss something we've never had. Maybe it's because we've gotten short and glimpses of the past in our present moments, as something deep inside of us longs for the way it could be. Certainly people throughout history have asked themselves the same question. If you were around in the 1910s, you lived through World War I and the Spanish flu pandemic. The 30s brought on the Great Depression, and if you were lucky enough to make it to the 40s, you might have survived the Second World War. Come the 60s and we lose President Kennedy. So it's not as if things are much worse than before. At least tragedy isn't it now. Every generation has its thorn, but what is it that we truly miss when we look back with nostalgia? Perhaps it's a longing for a simpler time? An era where human connection wasn't mediated through screens and devices? If you're like me, you might find yourself watching old shows and movies set in the 70s and 80s. See people playing outside, connecting and enjoying life without the constant distractions of our modern world. Technology is undoubtedly brought incredible advancement, but it's also created a paradoxical dilemma. While we're more connected virtually than ever, we often find ourselves feeling more disconnected in reality. We're glued to our screens, scrolling through social media, binge watching series, and messaging friends from the comfort of our own solitude. When we look back at these bygone decades, what we miss is the simplicity of human interaction. A time when people had face-to-face -face conversation, played in the streets, and shared genuine laughter. Those moments were filled with connection, and they're a stark contrast to our current lives. Where we can have thousands of online friends, but feel increasingly isolated. So the first step to the remedy is realizing that the magic isn't gone. It might be harder to find these connections than before. It might take a little bit more work, but it can be done. There are people out there who feel the same way. You're gonna have to step up, take the initiative, you're going to have to plan things too, but the more you harvest, the more you'll sow. So how do you do that? I'm not going to ramble about abstract ideas without practical solutions. If you need to start building a friend group, consider seeking opportunities to connect. Traditional churches, for example, oftentimes have many folks who are ready to make new friends. Join a youth group or a young adult group at your local church. Go out and talk to people. You'll be surprised how easy it is to make friends. It's as simple as complimenting someone's shirt at the gym, school or work, and striking up a conversation. But it's not just about meeting new people, it's about connecting deeply with those you already know. Disconnect from social media when you're with them. Go camping, hiking, work out together, enjoy each other's presence, set the phone down, go take everything the world has to offer. In a world that's becoming increasingly digital, we need to remember that the remedy lies in returning to the basics of human connection. It's about being present, sharing experiences, and building genuine relationships that go beyond the virtual realm. The magic is still there, waiting to be discovered by those willing to take the first step. So when we say I was born in the wrong generation, it's really not about longing for a specific time, but for the essence of human connection. It's timeless. As we navigate the challenges of the digital age, it's essential to remember that the remedy for our longing is within our reach. Time to step out, make those connections, Rediscover the magic that's always been there.